His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figure of speech. Now we know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. And Jesus answered them, Now you do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. I think that There are blurred lines oftentimes when it comes to national holidays such as Memorial Day and Veterans Day. I think oftentimes they get kind of mushed together into America Days and they really aren't as significant as the days in which they are named. For example, we think, we like to thank our veterans on Memorial Day on behalf of those who have died. But it's not Veterans Day. On Veterans Day, we thank our veterans and we remember those who have fallen. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, I'm just saying that this is something that happens. American days, American national holidays kind of meld into we love America, we love our soldiers, we mourn for those brothers um, who have fallen and we give thanks for their sacrifice. And all of this is, is certainly true. And no one would ever take anything away from them. No one should ever take anything away from them. But, on Memorial Day in particular, not, not so much Veterans Day, but on Memorial Day in particular, I have to point to a certain understanding. In order to have a Memorial Day, in order to have a memorial at all, there must be the loss of life. You know, in World War I, I watched a documentary recently, uh, just came out in, in theaters maybe six months ago. And it, they basically what they did was they took black and white footage and they colorized it and they, it was all about the troops in England. Um, and it was, a, uh, I can't remember the, the exact title. Um, but it was all about how they lived how they were brought into the army, into the fight, how the fight happened. When this was the, these were the days, of course, of trench war, where they would have trenches and just, you never knew when your time was coming. And then finally, they showed everything that had happened, friends that had died and all of that, and then there was one guy in particular that they kept showing. He was rolling his own cigarettes, living that hard trench life, never knowing if he was going to live or if he was going to die. And then at the very end, when they finally found out that the war was over, this same guy that kind of trickles in and out of the documentary, the very last thing that you hear in the whole documentary are these words. And it's from this guy. He walks into a pub and the, uh, the, the beer meister, in, uh, if it were Germany, I don't know what you would call it in England, um, said, asked him, where have you been? Did you take a night job or something? No idea. 
that this guy had gone off to war. Leg missing and all. What have you been doing with yourself? And that was the last thing that, that the movie ended. It was as if they had missed, he had missed the entire war. And he just thought this guy was off on a bender or working uh, 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 night shifts instead of being at his favorite pub. Now that is a memory. What that guy who hobbled into that pub that day remembers is a memory. And they fought and they sacrificed because they were made to do so, some of them. Some of them were volunteered to do so. But I have to fervently remind you that these men that we honor today on Memorial Day, they have not, or they have fought bravely. They have died courageously but they have not overcome the world. Now many armies have tried and failed. But there's one who has overcome the world. And to and on Memorial Day, we should be lifting up Christ so much more than the soldier. Because I guarantee you that on the battlefield, there's no such thing as an atheist. There's no such thing as an atheist on the battlefield. You believe in God real fast. And so today and tomorrow in particular, when we remember, not celebrate, remember the soldiers lift up the cross higher. Because those who have fallen asleep in Christ are the ones who are the true victors. Wars have been fought. Wars will always be fought. As long as we are human, as long as we are human, as long as we are here, wars will be fought forever and ever. Except for one, one that has already been fought and is already won. And take note of this, and this is very interesting. When fighting, and I have never been a soldier except for one under the cross. If you were to abandon your post, if you were to flee when the bombs start dropping or the bullets start flying, there's a whole lot of trouble waiting for you. If you go AWOL, if you run, if you scatter when things get bad, at best, I believe that's treason. I'm pretty sure that's treason, which there's only one punishment, and that's death. And yet, we judge them so harshly. I want to show, I, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to show you the difference between Memorial Day for the soldier and remembering what Christ has done for you. And here it is. You go, if you scatter in the midst of the war, you will be punished. You will at least be court-martialed. You will be in trouble. You will be charged with treason. And yet in the midst of the war for your soul, all the disciples scattered. You have scattered by your sin, by your lives, by the, by the living of your lives, how you live your lives. 
There is not one of us in here that, that can claim perfection. There is not one soldier that is buried that can claim enough honor to enter him into heaven. Not one. And there are many pastors who get into the pulpit and praise the American soldier and then say amen and sit down. But this is not the American Legion. As, much, as many great things that they do, that's not what this is. This is about what Christ has done for the American soldier and what Christ has done for you. Why? Why have you scattered? Shouldn't you be punished for going AWOL in the midst of the fight for your soul? Shouldn't you be charged with blasphemy and heresy? Burned at the stake? How about a crusade or two? Shall we have them? Because you scattered from the cross. You're all a wall. You're all treasonous. And I am the chief. The chief of all sinners. And so in the midst of the war when you scatter, when Judas scattered, when Peter scattered when all the disciples except for John and St. John and St. Mary who had to be there for Christ to utter the words mother behold your son son behold your mother all the other disciples had taken off and all of a sudden what Christ says here is becomes a reality and known to them because they say ah now you are speaking plainly. Now we know that you are the Christ. Now no one can convince us otherwise. Bam! 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 He gets nailed to the cross and they go, you know what? Ah, on the other hand, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Following this guy. And then on Golgotha, that cross gets raised. And there's no disciple other than John and St. Mary to see the ending of the war. It is finished, Christ says. And in that, the candles extinguished on that Saturday the bombs are silent. There's no whisper. There's no nothing. There's just rest. Until Christ ascends into hell to say to Satan, to his face, the war is over. He literally says in the Greek that he proclaimed the victory to Satan. There he put his flag. The same flag I would like to think that St. Michael will use to shove into the mouth and through the head of Satan himself when that day comes. He planted his flag and he says, I have overcome the world and the prince therein. And so if that is true, then understand that you are scatterers and that you are deserters, but remember that Christ is the good shepherd and that he has gathered you all back even though you scatter. No burning at the stake, no crusades. You're brought, you're brought together here to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Because on this side of the cross, after all the disciples have scattered, and even after you have scattered, make sure that you're not the one who looks at Christ and says, where have you been? Did you get a nice job? I haven't seen you in a while. Come see him. See the war. See the fight. See the victory. Eat it. Drink it. Give thanks for it. I'm grateful for our soldiers. I'm grateful for those soldiers who are awaiting the resurrection of the dead in the dirt. But let us not confuse the day with the Savior of the world that is Jesus Christ. If you, if you can say that the, that the soldier is the Savior of America, then who is the Savior of the soldier? Then ask yourselves this question. Are you soldiers under the cross? And your, will you use your weapon, your tongue, to taste, receive, speak, praise, and sing? For the Lord has done marvelous things for you, including that little thing called overcoming the world. Thanks be to God. And here is his final bugle call. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.